You're not a victim for sharing your story. You are a survivor setting the world on fire with your truth. And you never know who needs your light, your warmth, and raging courage. Alex L. Welcome to Long Haul Hope, a podcast for long haulers, their loved ones, and those who care about them. My name's Joe Grabowski. I'm a husband, a father, a pastor, and a tech geek. I've had lifelong struggles with depression, anxiety, and ADHD, and I've also most recently been diagnosed with long-haul COVID after suffering from shortness of breath, severe fatigue, and brain fog for over two years now. Long Haul Hope is not a medical podcast, but a voice of validation, empathy, support, and solidarity. Most of all, it's my desire that this podcast will be a voice of hope in the midst of the darkness of a diagnosis we do not yet fully understand. Each week, I'll share personal updates, positive news developments, advocacy, helpful resources, which I hope will be of value to you in your journey with long COVID. If you felt misunderstood, unheard, devalued, or even been made to feel as though you're a hypochondriac, you've come to the right place. You are not alone. Together we are stronger. There is hope. In case you haven't figured it out by now, I really like quotes. I mean, I like to use my own words. I like to articulate myself to express what I'm feeling. It's always a challenge, but there's something in a quote, just like in a song or a poem or a Hallmark card that resonates with us. It's seeing words in print or hearing words spoken that relates to us in a way that deep down inside we say, yes, that's exactly what I'm feeling. We go to great lengths to find the cards, the perfect cards for our loved ones, to dedicate a song, or even to remember occasions with a special song that just feels like it speaks to the moment. And once in a while we find quotes that put words to the feelings that were experiencing, but we cannot seem to find ourselves. So even though I opened the show with a quote, I also want to share another quote. This is from C.S. Lewis. Friendship is born at the moment when one man says to another, what? You too? I thought I was the only one. And that's such a great quote talking about the power of those quotes, the power of connection with another human being, of realizing that we're not alone in our human experience, but there's others who understand, who empathize, who know what we're going through. And really, isn't this what we, what we really need in life? We're looking for understanding. We're looking for compassion. We're, we're looking for people to just feel for us, to have an idea of what we're experiencing. And if you're like me, I've been trying to articulate the best I can what long COVID is like, but it eludes me. I I have a very hard time sometimes really capturing what I'm feeling in the moment. I was just telling my wife earlier this evening, and it's one of the things that's hard for me is that when I have good days, I they're pretty good days. But when I have bad days, when I'm not feeling well, it feels like no two days are the same. One day it's fatigue and brain fog. Another day it's all those and shortness of breath. Another day it's tachycardia and shortness of breath. Other days it's just the brain fog. Other days it's something else entirely. So you know, thinking back over the last couple of weeks, I had a stretch of pretty good days, but of course I overdid it. And last week, Wednesday, Thursday into Friday in particular, I was in all. I was just at an all-time low with energy, motivation. Uh, it felt like everything was difficult. We've talked about this. Saturday was one of those days. I those other days that I had been tired, um, and fatigued, laying down, or just uh, working from home and just doing nothing strenuous. My heart rate was good. My resting heart rate was like 70, between 70 and 80. And then during the course of the day, I don't think it really got over 100. But comes Wednesday, 
uh, Thursday. I'm getting my days mixed up. And out of the blue, midway through the day, I'm aware of my heart feeling like it's pounding out of my chest. Now, I'm very familiar with anxiety. I know what anxiety feels like, and I, I realize the connection of the, the rapid heart rate and, and feeling like I'm uh, shallow breathing. But I recognize this, again, this, this is not anxiety, and this is why I have a hard time with medical professionals who are quick to diagnose what we're experiencing as anxiety, because I know anxiety, and this ain't anxiety. But I'm aware of my heart rate going, so I happen to look at my Apple Watch, and my heart rate is about 110 just doing nothing, but I'm feeling short of breath. My heart rate's high. Um, I, so I do my deep breathing. I do some mindfulness stuff and it still stays at over a hundred for resting. And I get up to walk across the house to go get myself something to drink. And my heart rate's up to 125. Again, nothing dangerously high, but out of the pattern of the other days where I'm doing the same thing and it's it's not even tipping 100. And then I go upstairs, bring a basket of water upstairs, my heart rate's about 144 and I'm out of breath and I have to sit on the bed for a little bit. And I'm out of the breath to the point where I'm gagging. Heart rate, heart feels like it's pounding out of my chest. I'm relieved in the respect of this time last year I didn't have the long COVID diagnosis. I believed I had it. But I was getting these testings done to rule out any cardiac issues or respiratory issues, which, of course, have all come back great, good. I don't want to say great, but good. So I don't have to panic now when I feel like that. But still, it's, it's frustrating because I'm still trying to identify the triggers. Anyway, this brings me to today's topic about the power of peer support. As I've mentioned before, I've been walking this particular journey for about two years. I suspected I had long COVID, uh, couldn't get confirmation on that. I went through a bunch of testing. And for the first year or so, I was really kind of on my own. You know, my wife understood. She saw it. She supported me. But that was it. And I read articles. And that was. And there was something about reading articles and, and seeing other people are experiencing the same things that you know, felt good, made me feel like I wasn't entirely losing my mind. Um, but then I found on Facebook a long COVID support group. And I found on a, a different message board a similar group. And reading those, me reading those messages, reading those threads, and hearing people from all over the United States, and in some cases from across the world, articulating in one form or another what I've been experiencing. And let me tell you, that that started to do wonders for me. Of course, I feel terrible that other people are experiencing the same things, but it brought me back to me like that quote says, what, you too, I thought I was the only one. When you realize you're not the only one. There's something about that to know you are not alone. You are not alone in this fight. And this comes back to the message of hope. Because as long as we know that we're not alone, we can hold on to hope. If we feel alone in our battles, then hope quickly slips away. So these were great enough. These were these were people, uh, people you could see a profile picture, but they had faces, they had names, and their stories. Whether they had uh, long COVID or long COVID symptoms for two months or two years, so much similarity with the brain fog, the fatigue, and the shortness of breath, and the heart rate stuff, and the intermittent ups and downs, and the medical professionals saying it's it's probably depression or anxiety it's probably being um, deconditioned and being overweight or being this or that and being dismissed so in those groups of community began to find a spark of hope and then after i'd gone through all these tests that go through and they come back normal and again i'm feeling like a hypochondriac i go see uh, the pulmonologist again for the second time and she does something amazing. 
She validates me. She doesn't dismiss me. She doesn't minimize. She validates. She'd, she'd worked with other people with long COVID. And she recognized the symptoms. And having put me through some additional tests and they came back good, she diagnosed me with long COVID. That moment was incredibly validating. Yeah, it wasn't a diagnosis. You know, I'd rather have a diagnosis of, hey, you're fine. <laughs> Just get some rest and wake up tomorrow and you'll feel good. But to hear somebody actually have heard me and to look into it and then to provide that validation was so life-giving. And then she referred me to a long COVID support group um, right now meeting virtually um, from a hospital in Vermont once a month over Zoom. And uh, I, the first meeting I sat on on that was so incredibly validating because now there's faces and names, but these are people who I can see them and I can hear them and hear their voices and know that most of these folks live within northern New England. So I'm not even the one person in New England who happens to have long COVID. There's quite a number of others. And from then on, I found other um, support groups and other um, places to find that solidarity. And it's been a life giving. It's just been so life giving to have that validation from my wife, <clears throat> from the pulmonologist, and now my new doctor and medical team. And from my family and from my friends and from these incredible communities, uh, both locally and online is just great. It's finding, it's like finding my tribe. Um, I always heard the story of the ugly duckling and how he just didn't, he went through life feeling like he didn't fit in. He was the ugly duckling. But one day, of course the truth came out. He was not really a duckling at all. He was a, a goose or a swan, but he was not. He found his tribe. He found his people. And in the long COVID community and the MECFS community, post-viral infective, infectious diseases community, there are so much common threads of symptoms, of experiences, that anytime I feel a little bit alone, I could draw from these resources and, and, and feel validated again and feel heard and feel understood. And recently, uh, starting my account on Twitter, which has grown now to over 300 followers, again, it's an amazing community of people who are sharing their stories and sharing encouragement and not being afraid to put it out there when they're feeling hopeless or frustrated or in dire straits. And this leads me to back to my opening quote, because we may feel like I don't have anything to contribute. I don't have the ability to speak to an audience. I don't have the ability to contribute anything of value to this conversation. I'm home. I'm barely holding on. I feel like life it maybe isn't even worth living anymore. You might be feeling like that, but I want to remind you that you don't know who is out there who needs your spark, who needs to hear your story, who needs the validation that only you can give. So this is the power of peer support. In a number of ways with advocacy efforts too, the more voices there are, the more sharing of experiences, hopefully the more likely there will be for future research and uh, health priorities and um, help for us. But if nothing else, it's knowing that we don't have to walk this journey alone. There's others out there who know, who understand, who care deeply, and who are thinking of you, who are praying for you, who are wishing you well, who are sending out good thoughts, whatever you want to call it. People who are concerned for your well-being because they know and they understand. And just as you drink deeply from that support and validation, so your voice is equally important to others. So as I end this podcast today, I want to leave you with that thought. The power of peer support is validation. Validation for yourself that you are not crazy. 
it's not in your head. You're not being um, dramatic or uh, hypochondriac. It's real. It's a thing. It's happening to you. We don't understand it. We don't know how it's going to play out. We don't know if it's going to get better. We don't know if it's going to last forever. But it's real. And what you're going through is just as valid as anybody else. Don't ever diminish your story because you perceive somebody else's to be more important. All of our stories are important. I think of trauma. We always hear about trauma. We think of the big things. But there's such a thing as trauma with a little t. And that trauma, those daily little things that happen are just as significant in the big picture as the big trauma with the capital T. Don't invalidate your collection of little traumas against somebody's big trauma. What we are experiencing, what we've been going through health-wise, uh, medically, hearing from the medical community, maybe from our family and friends, uh, people who don't believe or whatever, it's traumatic on every single level. And then add in the trauma of the pandemic and everything else associated with that. So the good news is, despite all these things, you're still here. And you're, if you're listening to this, it means you are searching for those things in which hope can be found. Things that make life worth living another day. And knowing that you're not alone. And I challenge you, if you haven't connected with others yet, or if you participate in the, if you are in an online uh, support group but you haven't spoken up because you don't feel like your story is important enough speak up because somebody needs to hear your story i'll talk with you again very soon so until then take care and always remember to choose hope thanks for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please subscribe share or leave a rating and a review and i'd love to hear from you you can contact me at joe at longhaulhope.com and follow Long Haul Hope on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, get plenty of rest, be compassionate with yourself, and keep choosing hope. I'll chat with you again soon.